Uh, I'll talk about yet another type analyzer for Ruby uh, called Type Profiler. Uh, this is the second time for me to talk at RubyCon. Uh, sorry? The screen is not on. Oops. Uh, OK, uh, thank you. Uh, but uh, the previous uh, talk, uh, pr my previous talk is about joke Ruby programming. So this is the first time for me to talk uh, serious talk. OK, so I'm nervous, but I'll do my best. Okay, OK, I'm Yusuke Endo. I became a, a committer of MRI, Mass Ruby Interpreter, uh, 2008. And I have contributed to Ruby for 10 years, about 10 years. Uh, the most famous feature I contributed to Ruby is perhaps uh, keyword argument. I've implemented keyword argument at Ruby 2.0. And I've created a de facto standard uh, benchmark program for Ruby 3x3 uh, called Opt Carrot, uh, which has driven uh, many Ruby implementers. And I was a Ruby 2.0 release manager, and I have been still uh, involved in release management of MRI until today. And also, I'm working on uh, quality assurance of Ruby, including test and CI maintenance. Okay, I'm working for Cookpad, uh, as, as, and as my, as my job, uh, I'm developing Ruby with Koichi, uh, you may know, uh, Ruby's VM developer. Uh, Cookbot employed two full-time Ruby committers and sent to me here, RubyCon. Uh, so let me briefly introduce our company. Uh, Cookbot is a company aiming to uh, make everyday cooking fun as our mission. The main service is Cookbot.com, uh, which is a recipe sharing platform service. You can submit your original cooking recipe and you can also enjoy uh, recipes that other uh, users authored. And there's about 90 million uh, monthly average users in the world. And currently, QuickPath supports uh, 30 languages and services at 73 uh, countries. And the service is still going to be at uh, aim to be number one uh, in 100 countries. QuickPath.com is powered by Ruby on Rails. To develop and maintain this large scale service, uh, we need to many great Ruby engineers. So we are hiring. Uh, I'm working at Japan office, but uh, Cookpad headquarters is in United Kingdom. Uh, so if you are interested in, uh, feel free uh, to contact on me. OK, uh, today I will talk uh, about three topics. One is Matt's plan uh, for Ruby three types. As, uh, uh, as Matt said in his keynote, uh, uh, sorry, uh, as you see, uh, the previous two talks in this room uh, were both about Sobe, uh, a type checker for Ruby. And Sobe is undoubtedly the most mature, and, but at, uh, there are some uh, other proposed type uh, analyzers for Ruby. Actually, uh, we, uh, Sobe team, uh, Shopify team, and some other type analyzer authors, including I, have held a monthly online meeting uh, with Matt to discuss uh, Ruby 3 static analysis. And uh, Matt is planning to put them into one big picture. Uh, so uh, allowing users to select or choose uh, a suitable type checker according to their needs. Uh, the key feature to integrate uh, multiple checkers is Ruby signature. Uh, this is a, the standard uh, format to write uh, type, in, in type information for Ruby code. Uh, all the type checkers can use and share the same uh, type signatures for Ruby, uh, stand, uh, Ruby standard libraries and gems. And finally, uh, I'd like to talk about my project called uh, Type Profiler. Type Profiler is a type analyzer that accepts no annotated Ruby code. Uh, it aims to provide a kind of type inference to help you uh, write a signature. Uh, OK, I'll explain uh, them in turn. Uh, first is uh, Matt's plan. Matt said uh, in, uh, that Ruby 3 will provide types or uh, static analysis features. Oops. <laughs> uh, the objective of the analysis is to find uh, possible bugs uh, without execution. 
In other words, uh, it aims to improve uh, develop development experience uh, for human. Uh, conservatively, uh, the analysis result is just for human. So a few false positives or wrong alerts uh, are acceptable. Okay, uh, for example, uh, this method uh, uh, this method is considered accepts one uh, integer argument, this uh, increment uh, called the increment method. Uh, but this definition has one type of uh, integer times is written as time is. Uh, also, it has another type error. It attempts to add integer and string. Uh, if you can find such bugs uh, before running our spec or something, uh, that would be definitely great. And the simplest solution to achieve this goal is to apply uh, traditional type checking uh, to Ruby. But uh, traditional type, Ruby, uh, type checking requires more, more or less uh, type annotation. For example, so uh, you need to write uh, what types uh, the method accepts and returns, uh, like these green lines. Uh, if uh, people accept uh, this annotation, this style of annotation, uh, the story is relatively simple. So here, I'd like to ask you, do you want to write an uh, annotation into your Ruby code? Okay. If you want to write, please raise your hand. Oops. <laughs> Take a picture. <laughs> okay, thank you. And next, uh, if you don't want to write such annotations, please raise your hand. Wow. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, honestly, uh, I, I prepared two slides. <laughs> that was uh, <laughs> unexpected for me. Uh, I thought many of you would like uh, to write type annotations because they are actually useful, uh, not only for type checkers, but also as a communication tool to explain the API to other developers. So it is important, especially in large scale projects. And in, actually, in Ruby 3, uh, you can uh, write types uh, by hand if you like, uh, because Ruby 3 will provide the official way to write type annotations. And if you write them, uh, you will gain relatively stronger uh, type checking by survey or other type checkers. Uh, that would be definitely great. However, uh, Matt said in his keynote, uh, he still hates type annotations. Uh, this is why I'm working on type profiler. By using type profiler in, in Ruby C, uh, you don't uh, have to write uh, annotations uh, by hand. And even you can check uh, your code uh, with uh, almost no annotation if my project is succeeds. Unfortunately, uh, uh, what type profile I use is really challenging. And honestly, uh, I admit it is still very preliminary. So the development of type profile is currently going through difficulties. But to keep Ruby uh, non annotated by default, I'd like to challenge it. Okay, so to achieve this goal, uh, Matt is currently planning for Ruby, to, Ruby 3 to provide three items, three features. Uh, first is Ruby signature language, uh, the standard type uh, signature format for standard libraries and gems. Second is a kind of uh, type inference to generate a signature prototype for non annotated code. Third is a type checker. Uh, that verifies uh, the consistency between code and signatures. So by using uh, item one, uh, Ruby signature, uh, you can write type signatures for your Ruby code uh, by hand. Uh, but you don't have to write it manually uh, using item two. Uh, you, can uh, you can automatically generate a prototype of signatures uh, for your Ruby code. Uh, you are no, un you are no annotated Ruby code. And finally, uh, you will uh, have signatures for your code, and by applying item three, uh, you can type check your code. Item three includes Sobe. Sobe is already explained well, so in this talk, I'd like to explain items one and two. Okay, next, Ruby signatures. Uh, 
Uh, I asked uh, Sotaro, who is the author of Ruby Signature, to explain it him himself. So I pass the mic to him. Thank you, Skate. Oh, so uh, I'm Sotaro. Uh, I lead the design and implementation of RBS in the Ruby core team. I also developed uh, my own static type checker called Steep. And yeah, there was a correction about mass keynote yesterday, so we don't have no session about Steep this year. So uh, I'm working for Square now. So uh, this is the Ruby signature language RBS. It is the standard language to describe the types of the Ruby programs, like the classes, modules, or methods, instance variables, the mixing relations, like that. The, one of the most important things in RBS is it is another language from Ruby. It's a different syntax, different semantics. It is to aim, uh, we, we want to keep the Ruby code un unnotated. So uh, we have an example in the slide the green lines are RBS. So in ink.rbs file, we write the type definition of the class called ink. It has a method increment. It receives one argument of integer and returns an integer. So uh, this is a bit similar to Ruby, I hope, but that it's a totally different syntax. So, uh, and the ink.rb is, it's the Ruby program you, you are familiar already with. So the type related things like the signature is, uh, it's isolated to another file. This is another example of the RBS class definitions of array. So we support generics, we support some overloading, uh, we provide an optional types to represent it might be new, or we allow it to you, to you to write the type of blocks, and we support some of the mix-ins, include, including the include and extension. We also support to defining interface. So the difference between class and modules and the interface is that there is no component in Ruby program associated with interface. So the interface we call DAC is to support the DAC typing. So it means that there are no specific class associated with the interface, but that type, the, the value of that type has a method of quark. So, uh, RBS has two usages. The first one is for type checking. If you want to type check your application or your library using some static type checkers, including Solvay or Steep or RDL maybe, then uh, you need some the type information of the libraries. So the RBS is uh, to describe the types of the, sing uh, of the classes included in the gems. Or in fact, my type checker Steep uses RBS to define the signature of your library uh, or your, your Ruby application. So it is uh, different from the Solvets. Uh, they use the inline type annotations uh, in the Ruby code. Steep uses a uh, RBS file, a uh, different file to write the signature of Ruby types, the types of Ruby application. Another one is uh, for documentation. So RBS lists up the, all of the classes included a program, and then it, it describes the how, what, what is the method defined in the classes or its types. So I believe that it's easier to read the RBS uh, compared to reading the Ruby code to know about the classes. So this is uh, how to use the RBS. Another one is how to make RBS. The easiest one is that using uh, some kind of the editors and write the every line of the RBS yourself. But I know that it's super difficult. So we provide a tool to generate a template of the 
RBS from the Ruby code or Solvet RBI. It's a super simple tool. It scans the Ruby program and detects some of the class definitions or method definitions and just prints the templates. Another one is the generating the RBS from using type profiler, and this is the subject of this session. So, uh, and I, I'm now trying to develop a tool to test the RBS definitions, uh, it's, if it is correct or not, uh, with respect to the Ruby programs using the uh, runtime APIs by the dynamic type checking. So it is an option that you don't want to type check your Ruby program, but you want to write RBS. So this is a quick introduction of RBS, and so hand back to you, Skate. Hello, hello. Uh, thank you, Sotaro. Uh, so now we enter the main topic. Uh, I, I introduce uh, my project called Type Profiler with some demos and the key idea uh, of the analysis approach. Um, type, of, type Profiler has a clear ad advantage. It can analyze uh, mostly uh, non annotated uh, Ruby code, uh, but as I said, uh, the task is very challenging, so it has uh, some known problems and limitations. Uh, I'll discuss them uh, at the last. Okay, so Type Profiler is like in the type inference that uh, accepts uh, non annotated Ruby code and generates a prototype of signatures. Uh, this is a very simple example. Uh, type profiler is this code and suggests uh, the signature prototype. Uh, a method increment uh, accepts integer and returns integer. In this case, it works perfectly, so there's no long guesses. But uh, type profiler may produce long results, uh, so a user uh, is assumed that they check the result, uh, inference result, before applying uh, type checker. And in addition, uh, type profiler can serve as a weak type checker. Uh, if type profiler finds unknown method code during the analysis, uh, the, uh, uh, type profiler reports it as a possible type, uh, possible non method error. In this case, uh, like this. Uh, also, type profiler finds unresolvable over overload, uh, such as calling integer plus uh, string. Uh, integer plus method with uh, string argument. Uh, type profile put it as a possible type error, like this. The analysis is in general weaker than traditional type checkers such as Solve, uh, but uh, it may be useful uh, if you don't want to maintain the generated signatures. Okay, uh, before explaining uh, how, how uh, type profile analyzes uh, Ruby code, I'd like to briefly show what type profiler can do uh, currently, actually. Uh, I'll show two simple case studies with uh, two uh, self contained programs, uh, AORB and OptiCarrot. Uh, one is called AORB. Uh, it is a simple uh, 3D rendering program uh, written in Ruby. Uh, it has about uh, 300 uh, lines of code. And like, yeah, I show it. Okay. And this is a, a normal Ruby code. This is a normal Ruby code, as you see. And applying uh, type profiler to this code. Uh, it outputs, oops, uh, like this, uh, a prototype of signatures. Uh, I uh, explain uh, by using uh, slides. Uh, this is a snippet of the uh, signature prototype. Uh, type profile detected cross back definition. Uh, it represents maybe uh, 3D vector. And you can see three instance variables, X and Y and Z. And they have a union type, uh, complex, float, and any. And the cross back has initialized method and some vector operations. We normalize, we back, uh, sorry, we length and we dots. And uh, 
uh, uh, V normalized returns back, but uh, V length uh, returns uh, any uh, as in, uh, inference. Uh, this is due to lack of knowledge of Britain class uh, of, uh, as I showed the source code. And Oops. Ah. Vlengus uses mask root, and currently type uh, type profiler uh, has no knowledge about mask root. So this is my fault, and fortunately I fixed this in the uh, previous break. So it is now. Oops. It is. Oops. Vlengus returns float uh, as uh, <laughs> correctly <laughs> you had. Okay, and so, but uh, in this case, I, I uh, succeeded to fix this uh, long inference, but uh, type profiler may return uh, long guess. So in this case, in such a case, you uh, need to fix uh, it uh, by hand by writing, uh, rewriting the result, maybe in this case, to float uh, in this case. Okay, also type profiler detects uh, syncras. Uh, it has uh, Sophia's instance variables as, as an array type and uh, plain instance variables as planes, plain. Uh, this uh, represents a uh, rendered model. And Syn has three methods, initialize, render, and ambient occlusion, and this type is uh, like this. And, Plane class has initialized and intersect methods, and type profiler uh, found, uh, found uh, lay, and isect may be mean uh, intersection, I guess. Okay, so uh, as you see, type profiler, uh, in, uh, type profiler basically generates a, a signature prototype. In my opinion, it served as a good start to write signatures for Ruby code instead of uh, full scratching uh, writing by hand. Uh, also, uh, this is not the main focus of type of horror, but it may be useful to uh, understand the program structure. However, uh, the prototype has some long and incomplete guesses. Uh, the current main reason uh, why type profile fails to analyze is due to uh, lack of knowledge of written classes. I think I can somewhat improve uh, the precision, uh, but type profile has a theoretical limitation I will explain later. Okay, uh, the next uh, case is so-called opt-carrot. Uh, it is an 8-bit machine emulator program uh, I've created as a benchmark for Ruby 3x3. Uh, it has about uh, 5,000 lines of code. Okay, this is the result. Uh, I omit the code and uh, the demonstration, but uh, the main class uh, opticalness has some instance variables. Unfortunately, uh, in this case, I prefer a failure to detect all methods, but initialize. Uh, this is, uh, again, uh, due to uh, less knowledge of uh, many built-in functions. And uh, that being said, the result is still useful for prototype, uh, I think, and actually uh, somewhat informative. This class has three circuits, uh, CPU, APU uh, as a audio processing unit, and PPU as a picture processing unit. And nowadays we call it, uh, it uh, GPU. Okay. And this is a result of class of uh, APU, audio processing unit. APU combines four wave generators, uh, two pulse wave modules, and uh, one triangle wave module, and uh, one noise mo wave module. Uh, this result clearly shows uh, the program structure without uh, manually reading the messy implementation. Okay. So unfortunately, I admit uh, type profiler failed to analyze optical so deeply. Uh, it just showed uh, some simple results. Uh, this is because uh, type profiler don't know, uh, doesn't know uh, some built-in classes and the methods. Uh, in this case, optical uh, highly uses uh, fiber class, and currently type profiler doesn't know uh, the class at all. So uh, type profiler, if type 
profile line count as unknown classes, uh, it is hun they are handled uh, as any, uh, so you can no longer analyze the code. Uh, still, the result is useful, I think, to, for prototyping a signature. Uh, the approach of type profile I explained next is never perfect, but I believe uh, it is promising. Okay. Uh, I briefly explained the key idea, uh, internal of type profiler. Uh, I said uh, it is kind of uh, type inference, but it is very different from traditional type inference algorithm, so-called so -called, uh, hinder mirror type inference. Uh, later, uh, it is based on abstract interpretation, uh, so-called AI, uh, or uh, symbolic execution. The idea of type profiler is to run a Ruby code in type level. Uh, this slide shows a very uh, simple example. In a non Ruby interpreter, uh, this, uh, the last call, uh, method to, uh, the call to method two with uh, argument 42, passes uh, an integer object 42 and returns a string object uh, converted from the uh, 42 integer. Uh, in type profiler, uh, the same code passes an integer uh, type uh, instead of a concrete integer value 42 and returns a string type like this. Uh, type profiler records uh, what types are passed and returned and uh, shows the ob observation uh, as like uh, type, uh, sorry, uh, type, uh, Ruby signature format. Okay, and the difficult part of all type profiler is a branch because a type profiler, type prof, sorry, a type profiler abstracts the concrete value. Uh, so type profiler, type profiler cannot tell uh, which branch is selected. Uh, for example, type profiler just knows uh, n is int integer in this case. So it cannot de determine uh, if uh, n less than uh, 10 is true or false. So type profile forks the execution and runs uh, both then and else clauses. In this case, then clause returns an integer and else clause returns a string. By gathering these uh, results, uh, type profile suggests a type, of, uh, type signature as like uh, by using uh, union type. Uh, method who accepts integer and returns integer or string. Uh, this is union type. Okay. And finally, uh, I talk uh, the difficulties of type profiler. Type profiler works uh, beautifully in some cases, but it has uh, some limitation and incompleteness. I explain in turn. Uh, first is Torbia. Uh, type profiler analyzes uh, Ruby code by abstractly interpreting it. In other words, it cannot analyze unreachable code. So type profiler requires an uh, entry point to trigger all methods. So typically, uh, a test code uh, is a good way to trigger uh, method in type of uh, If you write uh, uh, a test code uh, like this, type profiler can infer the argument type and return type of the method being tested, like this. Uh, method link accepts integer and returns integer. However, uh, if there's no test for the method or the method is not used uh, directly nor indirectly. Uh, type profiler cannot infer the signature of the method like this. And even you write tests, uh, some of them uh, leads to long guess. For example, this test uh, ex expects an exception by passing long type arguments. Uh, in this case, type profiler doesn't know that this test expects uh, exception. Uh, so it generates a long signature like this, uh, method who accepts, uh, expects uh, string, but it is not uh, the fact. And another case is a mock object. Uh, the test passes a mock object, object uh, to method bar in this case. And so type, of, type profiler uh, infers the method accepts a type of mock object, uh, but it is not uh, expected signature, of course. Uh, 
to prevent these wrong guesses, type profiler needs to know that uh, these tests are not suitable to infer the signal gap. Uh, for, the, for that, uh, type profiler requires uh, knowledge about test, test framework, so integration between type profiler and uh, test framework is uh, needed. And third is uh, type profiler has a theoretical limitation uh, due to its type level interpretation. Typically, uh, type profiler cannot handle uh, object send. This is an example. And this and the last send call uh, specifies a target method uh, or, uh, by using uh, storing ink to sim in this case. Uh, type profiler cannot determine the result of storing ink to sim because it has no uh, knowledge of the, this is just string, uh, it, it does not know the uh, contents. So uh, type profiler can uh, know the result is uh, symbol, uh, uh, but not uh, uh, symbol ink. So type profiler cannot identify the target method, so in this case, uh, the method ink cannot be inferred correctly. And the same goes to another variable features, for example, singleton method. Uh, it cannot handle in uh, object single method is in, in general. But uh, type profiler supports class methods uh, by special handling of class objects. And object eva and binding and so on are also difficult for uh, type profiler to hand, deal with. Uh, in such case, you need to write a review signature uh, for such method uh, by hand. Uh, finally, uh, honestly, I admit type profile is very uh, preliminary. Uh, actually, uh, designing uh, imp and implementing type profile uh, is harder than uh, implementing MRI compatible normal interpreter. Uh, this is excuse, but uh, I think so. And uh, I'm implementing it by uh, trial and error. Uh, already, it, uh, which has already uh, taken one year. And it does not support many language features yet, uh, notably module and the exceptions are not supported yet uh, correctly. Uh, moreover, the analysis performance should be uh, improved uh, after the approach is fixed. Uh, I need to perform uh, more case studies uh, with real programs, including real uh, Rails applications. So I really appreciate if, uh, your, company, uh, your contribution, if any. <laughs> okay, uh, related to work. Uh, Meta Ruby, uh, sorry, sorry, MRuby MetaCycular is a ZIT extension with uh, type analysis for MRuby. Uh, its type analysis approach is also based on abstract interpretation. Uh, actually, uh, uh, MRuby MetaCycular inspired type profiler. And the type analysis for JavaScript is a research project for inferring uh, types of non-annotated JavaScript. It is also based on abstract interpretation. And RDL is a research project to extend Ruby with types. And recently, uh, the reader Jeff, uh, Jeff Foster started uh, supporting type inference. The approach is very different from ours. Uh, it is based on traditional type inference with uh, some heuristics. Uh, I hope the approach uh, would succeed for the case uh, where my project fails. And okay, acknowledgement. Uh, Hideki Miura uh, created MRuby's uh, experimental JIT compilers. Uh, that inspired type profiler and give me fruitful uh, discussions with uh, committers, Mats, uh, AKR, and Koichi. And I wrote a paper in Japanese uh, about this tool and Steep uh, with uh, Sotaro and a Professor Katsuhiro Ueno and a Professor Ejiro Sumi uh, in Tokyo University. And Stripe team and Shopify team. Uh, Creating survey and the, the Foster's research group is developing RDL. Uh, the current plan will be three types are created by all of them. Okay, I conclude this talk. Uh, I explained uh, Matsu's plan for Ruby three types, and it consists of three key items uh, for the tooltain. And I introduced type profiler uh, 
uh, type inference, uh, type inference two that is included in the, uh, that is uh, planned to be included in the tool chain. And type profiler is an um, approach uh, that is applicable to non annotated to be code. Uh, it is based on abstract interpretation. And I hope it will make it possible to analyze uh, Ruby code with little change of Ruby's great uh, pr programming experience. Uh, in short, uh, no without uh, type annotations. Uh, type profile is an uh, open source, uh, so any comment or contributions are really welcome. Okay, I conclude this talk. Thank, that's all, thank you. <laughs>